Currently in our story, our hero George can collide with pieces of cake and other baked goods, and the pieces of cake will disappear. We're using collision detection. If he interacts with a friend, uh, he goes actually right through the friend, although the collision is detected and there is a message from the friend on the left of the screen. We want George to stop when he hits a friend or a house. As we know the collision, we could disable the movement when George does hit an object. This will stop George, but it will also prevent movement in the left, up, and down, because George is still collided with the object. One solution would be to automatically move George back at the time of collision and then have him stop. However, this will create a, a natural jerky motion. The solution is to first identify the direction that George is headed in at the time of collision. If we know the direction at the time of collision, we can save that direction in a variable called collision direction. Then we can have two if statements, one to check for a collision, and the other to check if the collision direction matches the direction the character wants to move in. When we check for a collision, if there's no collision, we're going to set the collision direction to minus one. We're representing the direction of the character by a set of numbers. Four corresponds to moving right. The direction is in a switch statement. So in the case of four, we know that George wants to move right. This is represented by step one. It's the one that's in the parentheses. In this explanation, step one is case four, and case four indicates that George wants to move right. The first thing we do is we change the animation of George so that he looks like he's walking to the right. That's step two. Step three is that we check the bounds. So we just make sure that George can't walk off the screen. So he can only walk up to the end of the map. The new information is step four. If the game dot collision direction is not equal to four. There's a lot of fours here, but the, remember four is going right in our simplified direction scheme. So if the, if George, if the collision direction is four, then George won't move. He won't get to this, uh, the inner part of the if statement. So it's only if the collision direction is not four, then that next line x plus dt times game dot character speed is moving George to the right. We're using tiled. This is our basic map here. The objects uh, with the boxes around it have some collision detection. So we have the two friends, and we have choco cake, cheesecake, apple pie, and cookies. These don't have the images inserted in here. Our game is inserting it. So in our game here, that red house is that red house. And then the, the pastry goods are, should be below the greenhouse. So the game itself is using the identifier for the various pastries and then it's adding it in. For the friend, since I want to be sure to uh, get that friend connection, I'm going to make this box a little bigger here. I'm going to double up the obstacle boxes with the friend box. So let's just make these friends a little bit bigger. So it's a little easier to make friends. And we're going to set up a new obstacle layer. So it's an object layer. We'll call this one obstacles. And then we're going to add some obstacles with this. So we'll create a smaller obstacle for the friend. And then we'll draw some obstacles around the houses. So 
So the only things that will be impossible to go past are these two houses and the two friends at this stage. You could, of course, make these obstacles or plant trees, but for the tutorial, we're just doing four. So let's go ahead and save our map. This map is in our project file. If we look at the map here, you see that the obstacles are here. So we set up four obstacles, if you recall. One, two, three, four. And the coordinates of the obstacles are right here under this group ID called obstacles. So we'll just test it. There's no uh, change, right? So there should be no change to the uh, collision. We just want to make sure the map file itself works. We're not even reading in this obstacle there at the current time. Just want to make sure we didn't break it. And in the next video, we'll read in the obstacle layer and we'll create some position components for obstacle and we'll take uh, actions based on if the our hero George collides with obstacles or not. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course if this is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.